morning, everybody. Summertime is upon us, and to me, that means adventure. My next adventure, and I've got to start getting myself prepared for that. Um, in my vehicles, when I do go on tra um, whatever travels I'm on, I like to keep some tools with me, and I like to keep a few supplies and things with me so I can repair a vehicle, if possible, um, depending on what it might be. Now there's a few ways that you can carry tools in a vehicle to keep them relatively organized and um, be able to access them if you should need them. And that's what we're gonna look at today because as I build my, my tool kit for my vehicle, I'm trying to decide what's the best way for me. So option one, something I've always kind of leaned towards is just kind of a big container, a big ammo can of sorts that can you can just throw kind of everything in that you think you might need, and that works pretty well, but the problem is, let's say I need a, a 3 8 inch wrench, right? 3 8 inch wrench, okay, let me see here. Okay, I'll dig in here, start pulling out some stuff. All right, 3 8 inch, and after about a minute or two of doing that, you eventually, almost always, just give it one. Now our next option is going to be something kind of like this, a tote of sorts, tool bag, whatever you want to call it, which is great because it's got lots of room, even a small bag like this can keep tons of tools in um, and keep them very organized. But the problem with vehicle travel is that vehicles move and bounce around and jostle and whatnot. And inevitably this thing gets tipped over and all of your very organized tools get spilled out in the floor of the car, the back of the truck, whatever. And also kind of a pain in the neck. And plus this thing takes up quite a bit of space, quite a bit of real estate. Um, when I'm traveling, I don't carry every tool that I own. That's just not very practical. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You carry the tools that you anticipate you might need. You carry the tools that do the most, the most jobs, the most versatile type of tools. Another good option that's out there is buying a ready to go toolkit. Um, now, I mean, the sky's the limit on what you can spend. You could spend thousands of dollars on tool kits and get really, really good quality tools. I'm not a professional mechanic. Um, I, I like to... I like to make my own repairs, I like to change my own oil, rotate my own tires, fix what needs to be fixed if possible. But I'm not a professional mechanic and I don't need the most expensive snap-on wrench out there. Because to me, as infrequently as I use them, it's not going to the difference in quality is not going to matter as much as it would to a professional mechanic. And the biggest problem that I had with a kit like this is that there's no room for modifying it to fit your needs. It's got what it's got and that's it. You've got to kind of deal with it. Um, there's no way to add to the kit and personalize it. Now my final option is something that I'm leaning towards um, is this tool roll. This Tool roll by Roaring Fire Gear. And it's not a bad little setup. It's a kind of a canvas, a heavy duty kind of canvas bag that um, can hold all of the tools that were in that big tote or in the um, uh, that, that tool bag. And it keeps it very organized and there's no wasted space. Everything gets rolled up nice and tidy and this can easily be thrown in behind a truck seat um, or carried over a shoulder if you need to tote it from one place to another. Um, it's got a nice little strap, easy adjustable. Um, seems fairly sturdy, fairly durable. The only thing that I don't particularly like so much about this is these buckles that hold it together. Uh, I could see these buckles being a little bit flimsy and possibly having some weak points and potentially not holding up to, to abuse. But if you're not, you know, abusing it too much, I think it's going to be okay. But if I was going to suggest one thing to Roaring Fire Gear is that I would upgrade those buckles a little bit. With adding heavier duty, more expensive buckles and components, you add cost. And the current price point on this is, is pretty low. I'll put the actual price of it on the screen there somewhere for you. But, but with the current price being fairly low and inexpensive, it's accessible for pretty much everybody. And you could have multiples of these um, in several different vehicles to, so you don't have to be moving things from one car to another like I currently do. But in my tool roll here, everything rolls out very nice and organized. I've even got room for a can of Fix-A-Flat and a garbage bag in here because everybody knows your car doesn't break down on a nice, pleasant, uh, dry ground. It always breaks down in the mud and the muck, and it's nice to roll out a trash bag and have something a little bit drier to lay down on so you're not sopping, soaking wet with mud. 
Um, and the can of flick, fix a flat is just a no brainer. It can inflate and seal small punctures in a tire and it um, can save the day sometimes. Um, now in my toolkit, I've got, I've got, I need to, to add a few more things to it. For example, I've only got a metric set of Allen wrenches. I'm gonna put a standard set in there as well. I've got all of the wrenches, all of like the normal sizes that you're probably gonna need, both standard and metric, tucked in here nice and neat and organized. In the small pockets here on the side, I've got all of the small wrenches so they don't start floating around, keeps them really organized. So everything small, um, under you know 12 and under metric and probably 3 eighths and under on the, in the small little side pockets. An adjustable wrench, might even add another one in here because this is something that you're gonna go to more times than not because it just gets the job done. Um, screwdriver, I like screwdrivers like this because you can change the bits out. I don't have to have multiple screwdrivers. This one's probably gonna get the job done for most applications. Small Phillips head, small flat head. Um, for most things, it's gonna get it done. I know I don't have torque heads or star drives or whatever, but, but most things I can get that, I could take care of. Um, pliers, pliers, both needle nose and, and regular. I've got a, ser a pair of uh, dykes or side cutters, channel locks, good set of channel locks. That's probably which, again, this, this, this is probably gonna fix most things that you have. If you have these three items, you could probably take care of a lot of issues. Um, maybe not everything, that's why I've gone to a little bit more in more depth on my toolkit because there's a few things that these these just won't get done and sometimes you need more than one wrench. Got to hold one side, hold the nut and uh, or turn the nut and hold the bolt at the same time to keep it from spinning, that kind of thing. Um, quarter inch ratchet, three eighths inch ratchet, couple of extensions for each. And then I've got just a single set here. I need to add the uh, metric set. This is the standard set uh, all the way up to three quarter inch. Um, which is gonna be most everything that you're gonna need. And I'm gonna add that, like I said, I'm gonna add the metric set to, to match it because, you know, people, car manufacturers can't make up their mind whether they wanna use standard or metric on, on vehicle. I've got a little bit of wire in case I need to, you know, temporarily strap something down, tie something down, twist it up, who knows. Um, and then in this small side pocket here, still got plenty of room. There's still two small little side pockets I could put something in here. I've got some duct tape, small roll of duct tape that I folded up to fit in there nice and neat and compact because duct tape fixes everything. Every good redneck knows that. Now a few additions that don't actually fit in this toolkit too well that I will be keeping in my vehicle if I go on any road, in extensive road trips or just, it's a good idea to keep in them all the time, but it's just a set of jumper cables. I like the longer jumper cables, but they just take up so much room, man. They're, they're, they're huge. Um, this smaller one works most of the time and gets the job done. I've got about, a, I think it's 25 feet of rope here, heavy duty rope that I could use to pull my vehicle out. Um, very strong stuff. And then just a hammer, because you never know when you need to whack something. Um, you know, starter gets stuck or something like that. You need to give it a couple good taps to get it to turn over. A hammer is really the only thing that's going to get that to work. Um, and I've... I've been in the situation where I haven't had a hammer before and I've had to use a rock to hit a starter and that doesn't really work that well. So a um, hammer sometimes is, is a good persuader and gets things gets things moving that otherwise are uh, being a little cantankerous. Guys, thanks so much for joining in as I put this little tool kit together um, for my vehicle as I go on my, my mini excursions that are in my future. Um, make sure you leave in the comments anything that you think I could do a little bit better things that might be a little bit more versatile tools that might do more than one job that I may be leaving out or forgetting, um, or just something I'm a bonehead for not including, like for example, this roll of electrical tape that I add, just, just now added because I know a lot of you would have called me out on it. Can't go anywhere without electrical tape, right? But this tool roll from Roaring Fire Gear, I think is pretty good and I think it's gonna serve me well. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna give it a give it a good run for its money. I'm gonna throw it behind the seat of my truck and tote it around and take it on the next adventure and we'll we'll go from there. But thanks so much for joining. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>